John, my name is Dr. Medalli. You had quite the scare there. Chest pain? And you passed out. What's going on? I don't know, Bob. Ain't you gonna tell me, Doc, ain't you? Well, we reviewed your EKG. Looks normal. Oh, good. Did a chest x-ray. Wow. Showing a slightly enlarged heart and also pinching of the vessels. Uh -huh. Now your blood pressure we checked. It's 150 over 94. Elevated. Because normal is 120 over 80. Mm -hmm. And your weight, 200 pounds. So you've been diagnosed with heart disease and hypertension. And hypertension being high blood pressure. Uh-huh. I don't get what's this what's me. John, let me explain what's going on with your body. Uh -huh. Now you see the heart, it pumps blood throughout the body, through like a set of pipes, or as we say, blood vessels of all sizes. Now your smoking has made your pipes or blood vessels less elastic. Your bad diet, high cholesterol has caused a hardening and narrowing of your arteries as well. Now your heart, it's having a difficult time getting blood through these arteries. It's having to work overtime. And because it has to work overtime, it's increasing your blood pressure. And now because your heart has to beat faster, your heart is now slightly enlarged and that could lead to some problems down the road. So with your hypertension, you may have another heart attack. Now they call the heart attack the silent killer because with all these issues going on in your body, you may not feel anything. Right now we're taking your blood pressure, it's sky high, but you're not, you know, you feel fine. You're overweight, you still feel fine, but you won't have any, you won't have any other major symptoms until it's too late. Now for your medication, for your hypertension, I am going to give you a diuretic, which is called hydrochlorothiazide or HCTZ. So what this is going to do, it's going to push excess water and sodium through your kidneys. You're going to be peeing a lot, but with less fluid in your body, your heart is actually pumping less, so it's going to lower your blood pressure. Now we're going to have to monitor your kidney function and electrolytes, especially your potassium, because if your potassium levels get too low, you're really going to feel it. You're going to feel weak, so we're going to have to give you a potassium chloride medication as well. But for now, we'll just keep you on HCTZ. But John, don't worry, your nurse and I will help you feel better. And we'll get you discharged today. Okay. Hello, Jonathan, good morning. How are you today? My name is Mindy, I'm going to be your nurse today and I'm going to just give you a little bit of discharge education today. Would you mind uh, telling me a little bit about your lifestyle habits? Well, I get up in the morning, I have fried chicken and bacon and something like that, pretty much every meal of the day. Uh, sit down about a six pack of Coke and Coors every day, three pack of Lucky Strikes. And um, yeah, I, I go to work, study, watch TV and go to bed. Okay, well, it seems that your diet is a bit high in processed food, which tends to also be high in sodium, saturated fat, and sugars, which contribute to cardiovascular disease. And smoking and excessive drinking is also a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Uh -huh. So what do I do about all that? Well, lucky for you, all of these are modifiable lifestyle factors, so you can start by monitoring and reducing your intake of sodium, your intake of sugar and saturated fat. Replace the uh, fatty meats with lean meats like poultry, fish, and other alternative protein sources. Um, reduce your sugar by uh, replacing the soda with water and instead of drinking six beers a day, you could cut it down to one for now. Okay, I got two things for you. That sounds expensive and it sounds boring. Well, with a little bit of planning, you could make your way down to Walmart and cut down your costs in half while still maintaining the same amount of food you would eat on a normal basis. 
Okay, you kind of got me there. Yeah, no, it ain't cheap eating out of KFC, but you still don't fix the boring part. Okay, well, you said you like fried chicken, right? What about yeah. a rotisserie chicken or yeah. a grilled chicken? All chickens is divine. Well, at Costco, lucky you, there's a $5 rotisserie chicken that you could pick up for yourself and make yourself some delicious chicken tacos or chicken soup, chicken anything you desire. Huh. I could I could trade burgers in for tacos. Yeah. And maybe maybe make some of that chipotle for myself. Beans is good, right? Yes. There are millions of recipes online that could potentially suit your tastes if you have the creativity to go up and look for them. Okay. Okay. So maybe I can eat healthy and still eat good. We ain't. Something's telling me we ain't done yet. Yes, I also want I to talk to you about your sedentary lifestyle. My sedimentary what? Uh, your sedentary lifestyle, which refers to how you spend most of the day sitting, there's not much physical activity. Yep, that's and, me. Yes, and so what I would probably recommend is to, after dinner, take a 30 minute walk five days of the week, and that will help to. Um, condition your heart and lungs and improve your blood circulation and how you know that it's sufficient exercise is if it gets you huffing and puffing so it's gonna be a brisk walk that'll be good for you and you also feel better afterwards because of the endorphins um you know you know what i'll get back to you on that Heart disease is defined as plaque buildup inside coronary arteries that constrict the flow of oxygen-rich blood to the heart muscle. Atherosclerosis is the hardening of plaque in the walls of the arteries. This process contributes to heart disease as it causes narrowing of the blood vessels. So you ask, how does heart disease apply to me? Well. Heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States. As Americans, we must be aware of our culture, which includes dietary choices and lifestyle habits that promote the development of heart disease. There are many risk factors that contribute to heart disease. Low density lipoproteins are considered bad cholesterol because they carry cholesterol to the tissues, which narrows the arteries. High density lipoproteins are considered good cholesterol because they remove cholesterol from the arteries and carry them to the liver, which breaks them down and removes the cholesterol from our bodies. The mixture of LDL and the constriction of blood vessels contribute to angina, which is pain in the chest characterized by pins and needles. A heart attack may occur soon after angina takes place. Other risk factors include high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, lack of physical activity, eating an unhealthy diet, high in fat and processed foods, and genetics. As we observed, Nurse Mendy explained that lifestyle modifications can be used to prevent heart disease. Nutritional therapy includes a low calorie diet of at least five servings of fruits and vegetables daily. It also consists of consuming whole grains, fish, and lean meat. Physical activities such as 30 minutes of moderate exercise four to six times a week can increase oxygen supply and blood flow through the body. Smoking causes blood vessels to constrict. The best solution is to make sure our young pupils do not begin smoking. Many tests are used to determine if an individual is at risk for or has heart disease. Blood work can explain abnormalities of different tissues in the body. The heart is a muscle. When it is damaged, troponin I and T are released from the heart into the bloodstream. High levels of troponin I and T occur in the blood about 3 to 4 hours after an injury. It remains elevated for 10 to 14 days. Next, ECGs measure the electrical activity of the heartbeat. Doppler ultrasounds use high frequency waves to measure the amount of blood flow through arteries and veins. Cardiac catheterization is insertion of a long thin tube into the blood vessels of the heart to diagnose and treat cardiovascular conditions. And lastly, an angiogram is a diagnostic test that uses a dye known as a contrast agent. 
X-ray pictures are then taken of the blood vessels. Statins are first-line treatments that lower LDL levels. Omega-3 fish oil is used to raise HDL levels, which counteract cholesterol buildup in blood vessels. Niacin is used for treating hypertriglyceridemia. Blood thinners such as aspirin and norepinephrine are used to promote the circulation of blood to ensure organs receive sufficient oxygen. Surgical treatments are the last resort. Angioplasty involves the insertion of a balloon to widen the artery. A stent is often used to prop open the artery. A bypass surgery restores blood flow to the heart by diverting the flow of blood around the section of a blocked artery.